a red butt buzzer is a traditional coronamid pupa pattern. A throwback, if you will, to a time when beadhead patterns were a concept of the future. My red butt buzzer design works as well today as it did in years past. When trout seem wise to beadhead patterns, try a change up such as my red butt buzzer. Here are the materials you will need. So let's tie a traditional non beadhead style coronamid pupa pattern, the red butt buzzer. Into the jaws of my regal, I placed a number 10 Daiichi 1120 curved scud pupa hook. We're going to attach our black tying thread because it's going to be a black red butt buzzer. Probably the most popular size, black and silver I do. Nip that off. I'm just going to cover that front quarter of the shank and then I'm going to tie in my wire which is going to be some ultra wire, small, silver. I'm going to hold that right up along the side. Get a couple of wraps and then start going backward. And I do this on a bare shank simply to control my body proportions. I like nice skinny coronaments so building excess layers of thread up um, can work against you. So we'll just pull that out of the way Retreat back up the hook shank a little bit, just in front of the hook eye, sorry, the hook point. And then we're going to tie in some red holographic mylar that we're going to use for the butt. A lot of coronamid species have a little bit of residual hemoglobin from the larval stage. It's just a trigger point for the trout as well. So we're just going to get that tied in place. A couple of wraps. And then secure that down the shank, right down the wire, and then come up forward and let the thread hang. And we're just going to take this holographic mylar, and even though this is going to be a butt, I'm going to advance it forward right up to the tying thread. So we're going to cover this up with our body material. This just provides a nice smooth foundation. We don't have any unnatural lumps or bumps at the back end of the fly. Everything's as smooth and slender as we can get it. I'll just tie that off. Trim the excess. Go back a little bit. For the body on our fly, we're going to tie in some scud back in black, 1 8. Trim the scud back to a point to ease tie in. Going to grab the tip of that point. Once I've got it secure, just going to pull it as tight as I dare, right back. Leave a little bit. You can see the little bit. Hopefully, see a little bit of the red here. So we don't want to go all the way back. We want to make sure we have a little red butt, and then we're going to come forward with our tying thread and open wraps. But at the same time, using this opportunity to smooth out the body any lumps and bumps. Now we're just going to take our scud back, pull on it, and wind it as flat as we can. All the way up. Let's make a nice, shiny, skinny body. I'm just going to come up, a couple of wraps over the top, a couple of wraps in front. Continue to pull up. Now what I like to do with many stretchy materials is just throw a quick two or three turn whip finish in. That'll lock that material off so if I accidentally bump the bobbin anything like that I'm not going to accidentally unravel this very stretchy scud back. So I do this with scud backs or stretch floss materials. Now we're just going to wind our ribbing forward over the body and butt so I'm going to make one complete wrap at the base of the butt. Try to come up right through it and then the next and then just start opening up slightly, ribbing our body and butt with this nice small silver wire. Come up to the tying thread, a couple of wraps on it, then I'm going to pull it kind of horizontal. Just secure that along what will be the thorax area, and then using a pulling and twisting motion, just going to break away the excess. So there's the body and butt section of the buzzer done. 
Now I'm going to tie in the wing case material and for that we're just going to use some pheasant tail. Strip off a few fibers from the stem, trim away the little ends, secure those down and I can overwrap onto the body slightly so that body will telescope nice and neatly into the thorax area. So for the thorax, the thorax is a two-stage thorax. It's got a back third or half of peacock curl and then a front section that's white ostrich curl. So we're going to tie in the peacock curl, a single strand by the tips. Hold that right on the side. Line that up. And then we're just going to wrap this around. You've got to be careful. You don't want to corral the thorax. If you will. You've got to keep in mind you've got a white ostrich curl section to go in. So it's better to be a little conservative uh, than too aggressive. So you've got room to tie in the hurl and, and finish off your fly because we've got a little beard to go in here as well. So we're going to tie in some white ostrich hurl for the gills. If you can, look for ostrich hurl plumes like this that have very short fibers on them. Um, we are tying a small fly. We don't want some of that big industrial stuff that's better for large steelhead flies or other flies like that. I'm just going to take our ostrich hurl, tie it right in. Wind back on it a bit. Make sure you have a nice smooth foundation so nothing starts sliding off towards the hook eye. And this is going to be, this is arguably the best gill material there is because it breathes and moves in the water just like the naturals. But unfortunately it's uh, one failing is it's brittle. So it's kind of fallen out of popularity for some of the more useful synthetics, which I also use as well. So we're just going to tie that in and then we're just going to Stroke all of this back a little bit. And I'm going to tie in our um, attraction, if you will, a little bit of flash. And for that, we're just going to use some UV uh, pearl crystal flash. Taking two or three strands from the package, I'm just going to lay them across the barrel of the bobbin, hold them in place with my forefinger, and double them around, and then just secure them back underneath the chin of the fly, if you will. We'll leave them like that and then all we're going to do is pull our we don't want to lose any of our ostrich or peacock curl so I moisten my fingers a little bit and just sort of part that hurl come over the top a couple of wraps to secure it down come in trim the excess build up a neat little head Finish. Trim our excess thread. And we can, I'm just going to hold those back out of the way. We're not going to trim them yet. I want them down and out of the way because I'm going to reinforce the body and add some shine to it with some of the UV clear fly finish in the flow formula. Nice and thin. Dries tack three, free. I'm just going to brush that on. Helps fill in a little bit of the, you can even put a little dab if you want, just to sit on top and give it a quick zap. And again, the UV crystal flash is there, just a little bit of attractive sparkle so this fly sticks out in the crowd. We've got it cured. And we're just going to come in. Gather that crystal flash together. Nip it just on the inside of the... Not just trails down, it's just a little bit of attractive sparkle. So that's the finished red butt buzzer. Hit one sort of errant strand. But this is a type of fly, if you're fishing waters that see a lot of angling pressure or, you know, they get a little sensitive to beadhead patterns. Um, this is just a, a great little alternative. It's how we used to fly, you know, sorry, this is how we used to tie cronmid patterns years ago. It's kind of fallen out of favor with some of the newer beadhead designs, but these uh, traditional flies still work very, very well. So reserve a few places in your cronomid section for a few red butt buzzers like this. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, 
information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. In addition, you can also follow me through my social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.